Are you listening? Damn. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Race to 100. I am Rich Thorsell. And I'm Neil Batang. And we are on episode number 64. 64. <laughs> Man. A little delayed reaction. Rich and I were just talking about like the rest of the episodes we have in mind and what we plan to do and how we plan on celebrating Race to 100, episode 100. So we've been kind of moving steadfast with this all and uh, we're excited to do this. Yeah, so today I, I think the country has been talking about uh, the you shootings, th you obviously. Think? Well, you'd be surprised the sort of conversations that are happening right now. This has dominated every possible sphere of media. You know, yeah, YouTube has a featured section up on the shootings. You have national news media talking about Dallas. You have, so I mean, everyone sort of has the basic information that there's not good stuff happening when it comes to race in America right now. A lot of, a lot of violence, a lot of anger, uh, a lot of protests, a lot of inequality. All of these things are playing into this this conversation. So what we wanted to talk about today, since there's been ad nauseum uh, commentary and dialogue about Rick's Rick, shootings. Before you continue, you're going to have to explain to our viewers what ad nauseum means. Oh, ad nauseum. Uh, a lot. There's been too much. Not, I don't want to say too much. There can never be too much. But there's been a lot. So anywhere that you go, you can find commentary on this. There are people out there who are doing this commentary uh, in regards to the details and the victims and all that much better than we are. But we wanted to focus on something uh, particular about the Dallas shooting, which is the most recent racial issue to show up on the Racially nation. charged issue that has showed up on the national scene that's got everyone talking. Now, a basic rundown of, of what this is. Neil, do you want to give the, the five second summary of what happened in, in Dallas? Bro, I'm going to need more than five seconds. Can I have more than five seconds? All right, you're on. Thank you're on the you. clock. Thank you. <clears throat> so, I'm going to make a few key points. One, Black Lives Matter. What does that mean? Again, we've been harping on this all season. And it is worth repeating. Black Lives Matter. What does that mean? Stop exonerating police officers or those that aren't minorities who wrongfully kill black people. Do not find an excuse to senselessly kill an African-American. That's what Black Lives Matter means. Now, we see this racially charged thing that just happened. Protests are, Dallas. by the way, protests are, protests are happening all across the country. Dallas was nothing unique except for this one instance. This one instance where a radical African-American, a militant one, decided to shoot at the police and unfortunately took the lives of several policemen. Not all cops are bad. There are bad cops, there are good cops. Nonetheless, that doesn't mean that police officers should be killed or slain in the line of duty. So for those that are hating out there, your Tommy Lorenz, your conservative folks to the right, regardless of whatever race, creed, or religion you consider yourself to be, this has nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. The Black Lives Matter movement does not advocate for violent action against yeah. the police. They don't and have the mantra of Hammurabi's code in an eye for an eye. Exactly. That's not, that's not the exactly. point of That is a very, very rare thought process. And we don't agree with that here at Straight Up. The Black Lives Matter movement does not agree or identify themselves with that. They are and in only fact, work actively to say peace is essential. Peaceful yes. protest is essential yeah. Dude, to get your people way. People were calling the Black Lives Matter movement a terrorist group. Whoever said that, how dare you say that? They, what? And it, you know, the only thing they aim to do is morally uplift the black community. Latino lives matter. White lives matter. Blue lives matter. We understand that, but why do the Black Lives Matter movement get some sort of a bad rap? Yes, they're slighted. They're they're hated on for for wanting to uplift their community during times of need, and it's effed up. So yeah, those 
things are completely separate. They aren't mutually exclusive. And I have to say, too, I, I mean, I've been feeling a lot of emotions about all of this. And, and I went on a, a couple of news conglomeration websites where they compile articles from different authors about all this. And I saw Real Clear Politics, which I tend to look on for, for political news. It, it's conservative leaning, so they have a lot more conservative articles. And one of the top stories that they had promoted there was police shootings actually don't target black people. And this it was a blog that ended up, uh, why they promoted this I don't know, but it was a, 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 a factually flawed article that was talking about how, oh, well, actually, police don't kill black people as much as they kill white people. And it cited some sort That's of bogus, it, it cited some That's sort of bogus true. study. And then it referred to a couple of, of anonymous articles and for me, I'm thinking, is this really the conversation that that's, that a, a group of white people are having in America right now? That just does not click with me. The fact that you have such a consistent and persistent effort by the Black Lives Matter movement to bring attention to this, and the fact that you have video camera evidence of this happening over and over and over again, isn't that any sort of indication that something's wrong? But so many white people are stuck in their little like internal bubble where they can't they can't see beyond the reality that they're living in. And the reality that they're living in is one that sees, oh, America's changing. You have minorities on the rise. You have Hispanics, the Hispanic population growing. You have African Americans consuming the media, uh, the media cycle, and and saying that white people are unjust. And so they get very defensive, and they get very like they they go back like this, and they're like, no, no, no. White people are good. Like you don't understand. Everyone, everyone is wrong, yeah. and it, it it is one of those things that just over and over and over again, you you see this echo chamber within a portion of the white community, and and there's nothing you can really do to break into that. Even me as a white person, I can I can have a conversation, I can listen with them, but I can't I can't break that mentality that they have that that will say Black Lives Matter is a racist movement. Or is a violent movement. That that is, that is all that they hear. That is very head. anyone who, who 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 thinks this way and cannot understand where we are coming from. What the premise of Black Lives Matter is? I'm sorry. Do some research. Research. Check out our show. You know that's what we're here to do. Inform you guys. And again, Rich. People believe a lot of people to the right, very racist conservative people, truly believe that the Black Lives Matter movement, they're advocates for the police being armed. Like, there are people who think, oh. Because that's what they you, want to hear. You, that, you, that's you, their you black, you black Lives Matter folk, you guys and supporting your black folk, you think that, hey. You support anyone who's black who does anything. Who, and who does anything wrong, and that's not the case. Police officers who are there to protect and serve for the good of the people do not deserve to lose their lives at all. Blue Lives Matter, yes. Black Lives Matter. You can say Black Lives Matter and Blue Lives Matter too without anything bad happening. You see how easy that was? You see how easy that was? Like that and that, thanks, yeah. bro. And people do not understand that and they believe that both are mutually exclusive. We don't support black terrorism, guys who are shooting cops for no reason, militancy, radicalism. It is not part of our mantra. The Black Lives Matter Foundation does not support that. The only thing they want to do is morally uplift their people through peace and justice. And the reason- And I wish I had a microphone that, to drop that right there. Good, man. Where's my I'm mic at when I need it? You know, it, it just, it just it's, 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 a, it's unfortunate. It is very unfortunate. Again, rest in peace to the police officers of Dallas that were working unjustly, unjustly killed slain for doing their doing their job. Doing and, their job, and it's very, very, very unfortunate that this happened. And that's the thing too is they were doing their job. They were they were protecting the people at the protests. They were they were ensuring law and order. They were not the ones who were going out and killing black men. They were doing their job. Yeah. And to to conflate that too is that good word conflate. is is just as wrong as saying Black Lives Matter movement is a is a corrupt movement. There's a lot of flaws in the police system as we know it, but a vast majority of cops are good-hearted civil servants who are doing their, their duty. Unfortunately, it is those corrupt ones that have just as much power as the good cops who are able to usurp the name of, of police and, and do all this, you yeah. know. So part of the reason why we wanted to talk about the Dallas shooting specifically too is that the conversation about how easy it is for an instance of 
violence within the black community it is to usurp the overarching conversation. Yeah. The media narrative totally changed. The media narrative for the two days in which you had consecutive shootings back to back, you had the president talking about, them, and then suddenly you have this Dallas shooting, the media stops covering the protests. Sorry to divert. Did you see that slap, you know what, that was trolling? You know who Joe Walsh is? Oh, you and are true. Now, now, you see that? Our president that has done nothing but good things for the US of A for the last eight years. We've got another politician trolling out of his rear end talking about assassinating Obama. And does he wake up with knocks on his door talking about being a terrorist and stuff? Oh, man. Man, Obama. But he's a white guy, so he can get away with man, it. And that's what people don't see. I bet you if you put Obama and Joe Walsh in a boxing ring right outside the U.S. House rep, I think Obama would get him. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Dude, and he's a lefty, but we're diverging <laughs> right lefty. now. I'm just... Yeah, that was... Dude, that was... Yeah, that annoyed me. I was like, what is... What is what is happening? And he was an elected representative. Isn't that the craziest part? That that people voted him into office, and he gets to say that sort of racist, bigoted, hateful rhetoric. Donald Trump, ironically, through all of this, has been very that has been the one diplomatic, yeah, and empathetic of everything that has been happening. He's but, been unusually quiet. <laughs> hey, man. We, at the end of we don't really have any love for that man, but he is. Uh, he has refrained from. But we like him more than. We like more him. Violence. We like him more than jo, the Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh and Tommy. Do you know who Tommy Loren is? Mm, I've heard the name. Ooh, that girl. We're we're gonna end up working with her one day, and that will be that'll be very interesting. Yeah, I know. It's, it's like it's just like you. I don't know, Riggs. I just it just sucks because you feel like you have people that like hate to acknowledge the facts. Like again, like what I tell people is I'm not speaking. From, I mean, I'm speaking from the heart, but I'm not going off of my emotions. I'm going off of logic and facts. Failure to acknowledge the racial disparity within our criminal justice system for me is like telling me the grass isn't green or the sky isn't blue. Mm -hmm. You might as well tell me unicorns <clears throat> exist. And if you and if do exist. See, and by that thought process, if you're that type In of person who interprets uh, knowledge as such, then, you know, I might not be able to have an honest conversation with you. But I won't judge you for your beliefs, but don't tell me an apple is an orange when clearly it's an apple, if that made sense. Enough sense. Enough sense. But at the end of the day, police lives matter, Latin lives matter, white lives matter, black lives matter. But, yeah. I think that we can't lose sight of the fact that black lives do matter and that you can't you can't take the actions of a single individual and completely change the narrative and I, that's that's been my problem is that the whole narrative has changed because of, of one mentally unstable person for all the good work that the hundreds of thousands of black individuals across America are doing of all the good work that's all washed away by one crazy person for a couple of days. Although, you will you will notice in the media right now, they're starting to shift their focus back. God bless Black Lives Matter for continuing the actions of protest. You have protests in New York, in uh, Florida, in uh, Georgia, in and, and all across the country are stepping up their game and saying, we're not gonna let this one bad actor influence what needs to happen right here and right now. So this is gonna be an, a continuing conversation, I think that Black Lives Matter are going to regain their, their spotlight in the news again very shortly, if not already by the time this airs. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Race to 100. Feel free to like, comment, or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more access to quality episodes of Race to 100. None of this would be possible without you guys. I'm Neil Batangrix. You want to add anything, bro? We'll catch you next time on the Race to 100. Peace.